Hey everybody! So tonight I am looking to discuss the 2006 film. Let's see, where are my notes? Yes, the 2006 film Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Talk about one of the funniest deconstruction movies ever made. This nails all the horror tropes. This is, this is just, my god, did they do such a good job. Apparently there's a second one, or there's potentially a second one. I haven't seen it. If it exists, I haven't seen it. And if it doesn't exist, I definitely haven't seen it. I don't know if this movie needs a sequel, but... Oh, God, this was so good. Nathan Basil's performance as Leslie Vernon, like, uh, he's such a good killer. He's so likable. He's so personable. He's so much character. And he's so bouncy. And he's so much fun to be around. But fuck, he's going to slaughter everybody. And you can't forget that. He says witty things, like when he's taking them around his house because he has a film crew following him around as he sets up his group of teenagers that he's going to hunt you know, stalk, hunt, and kill on the fateful night when, you know, Leslie Vernon rises again and gets revenge on the town people who left him for dead back when he was a kid, yada, yada, yada. So Leslie is taking the film crew around, the documentary film students, he's letting them make their little movie about him, and, like, he's taking them through his house, and he's, like, showing them his turtles, and he's like, I only keep pets I can eat. It's like, of course, of course you do. When he's out back doing all the cardio and he's all out of breath, he's like, the amount of cardio I have to do is insane. Because, you know, we always have to appear like we're walking. But trust me, we're not. When you can't see us, we're running like crazy to get to the next part so we can kill whoever it is then. And, of course, he ends up uh, taking them to his mentor's house, this older dude named Eugene, and his incredibly attractive wife. Eugene is a serial killer from years prior, back in the heyday of the 70s and the 80s. And of course, this isn't a joke. These aren't filmmakers making movies. These are serial killers and spree killers and mass murderers actually murdering people. So Eugene's this older dude, this cool older guy, this cool older guy that Leslie's going to for pointers, and he's bringing the, the documentary crew with him and the main chick, and it's super fun, and they come over for dinner, and it's like you almost lose yourself in the comedy of it all because... You know, like, we got an Ahab! Yeah, we got an Ahab! You know, it's like, what's an Ahab? But the truth is, he's a psychopath. And when Dr. Halloran, played by Robert England, kicks in, and he comes for Leslie, they find out that his name is, is actually Leslie Mancuso, and he was in some psych ward in Nevada, I believe. And then things get very real very quickly. He grabs a chick by the throat and whips her up aside the, beside his van and like starts to choke her out, saying, like, we're not talking about this here. And the violence jumps off like that. Like, Leslie goes from being all fun and bouncy to fucking... And she's, like, up against the wall, I mean, the side of his truck, like, in two seconds. So you know he's capable. And then, right at the end of the film, when he's like, all right, guys, I'm in the kill zone now, and he's got the makeup, the mask on, he's got his scythe, and he's about to go out and start the killing, he's like, this is it for you. You are going home, and I am slaughtering these kids that I've set up inside my kill house. And then the movie shifts from being a documentary into a more traditional sort of, like, horror movie, where the, the camera starts top-down on the chick and the documentary crew, and they make the decision to go in to try and help the kids. And of course you discover that Leslie had no intention. Those kids weren't the group. The girl, the final girl, was not the final girl. She was not a virgin. Definitely not a virgin. And it was the main chick that had been interviewing them the whole time, whose fucking name I can't remember all of a sudden. You'd think I would research these things a little better before I decided to do these videos. But no. I don't do things like that for some reason. It doesn't matter. He was actually there to hunt her the whole time, and oh my god. The end credits when you see him in the morgue and he gets up to uh, the talking heads. Psycho killer. Keska say. Bum, 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 Best end credits ever, because you know he's going to get up off the table, and he does. And so it does set up a sequel. Even though I will argue back again, this movie doesn't really need a sequel. The comedy was just so tight. And the transition from documentary to traditional film, again, was so spot on. I think this movie would be better off as a one-off. But then again, that's just my opinion. If you've seen the sequel, if it exists, I don't even know if it does. Again, lack of research. Maybe the sequel's great. I don't know. Again, I don't even know if it exists. How many times am I going to say that? Jesus Christ. Anyways, yes, this movie is super fun. It's really entertaining. Paradise Lost? Found it. And... <laughs> He's like a little monkey. Everything about this movie was hilarious until the end, 
when it turns into a very traditional, very serious horror film. And then they knock that out of the park as well. And that is it. So thank you so much for hanging out with me for a little over five minutes while I discussed the 2006 film Behind the Mask. The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Like always, if you like this review, or you like this movie, don't forget to do something nice for somebody. But like always, most importantly, please don't forget that the world is so much more fun because you are here, you are amazing, and you matter. And I'll talk to you guys later. Have a good night.